All right, so we're going to talk about the entire cell cycle today. So mitosis was a small portion of it, but we're going to talk about the complete um, cycle. Oh. Two, five, three. Oh, yeah. Two, five, three. All right, I am going to read through this, and then we'll go through it on the board. All right, normal cell cycle. The timing and rate of cell division are important to health of organisms. The rate of cell division varies depending on the type of cell. A mechanism involving proteins and enzymes controls the cell cycle. To start most cars, it takes a key turning in the ignition to signal the engine to start. Similarly, the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells are, is driven by a combination of two substances that signal the cellular reproduction of processes. Proteins called cyclins bind to enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs, in the stages of interphase and mitosis to start the various activities that take place in the cell cycle. Different cyclin CDK combinations control different activities at different stages in the cell cycle. Illustra uh, figure 11 illustrates where some of the important combinations are active. All right. In the G1 stage of interphase, a combination of cyclin with the CDK's signal start the cell cycle. Different cyclin CDK combinations signal other activities including DNA replication, protein synthesis, and nuclear division throughout the cell cycle. The same cyclin slash CDK combination also signaled the end of the cell cycle. What's that? Uh, quality control checkpoints. Uh, recall the processes of starting a car. Many manufacturers use a unique microchip in the key to ensure against theft. The cell cycle has also built-in checkpoints that monitor the cycle and can stop if something goes wrong. For example, the checkpoint near the end of G1 stage monitors for DNA damage and can stop, cycle, stop the cycle before entering the S stage of interphase. There are other quality control checkpoints during the stage and after the DNA replication in the G2 stage. Signal checkpoints also have identified in mitosis have also been identified in mitosis. If a failure of the spindle fibers is detected, the cycle can be stopped before cytokinesis. Figure 11 shows the location of key checkpoints in the cell cycle. That's all we're going to read. I'm going to read. Well, were you following along? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me interrupting. Sure. Um, one of the things that we talked about, the reason Mr. Wagner's not going on with that, because these different checkpoints that we see, if that goes by unchecked, these checkpoints, the cell cycle that you're about to see, the cycle starts, and it continues, and it continues, and it continues, and it continues. These checkpoints, they're not being... Uh, let's say administer <coughs> one of your goal cap terms. It's a type of cell division that goes uncontrollably and goes on cancer. and on. It's what we call cancer. So it's just a fancy way of saying that these checkpoints are important because if it does not happen, that is a precursor for what we know as cancer. So how do you make it not happen? You can't. So cancer is so caused how by like the cell cycle being like messed up. Messed up. Yes, it's uncontrolled mitosis. How so, how does it get messed up if it's what's that? In a cycle, like how does it get messed up? Um, okay, so you know how we're talking about DNA, right? Uh -huh. And how they each need to line, like the A's and the T's need to line up, and the C's and the G's. Well, sometimes something happens where they shift, or uh, maybe an A got put in where a T should have been, or something like that, and that's called a mutation. So when a mutation happens, it creates all sorts of messed up stuff for one, but um, when in concerns with this, um, it could it could cause the thing that slows the cell from growing. Like you don't want cells to just grow as fast as they can. So maybe maybe some DNA that controls the proteins that control uh, cell growth is damaged, so they don't have those proteins there. How do you damage it? Though? Um, it's it a like the sun, so the sun throws energy at your DNA and it rips it in half and it's all broken and laying and they try to fix it, but when they fix it, it doesn't get fixed right. Um, or just, it just P 
pure coincidence. Like maybe um, the wrong enzyme brings, or the, an enzyme brings the wrong. Um, it's it's so so complex that I can't. <laughs> it would take me all day to explain it. Yes. Um, that's a good question. So, yes, pretend, yeah. So, if each checkpoint checks a, a different part of, no, no, it like one checks, you know, this is all good. Another one checks, like, oh, that's all good. Um, sure. If 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 it's it detects that one checkpoint's not going through, it's going to stop the cell. From growing, it'll stop all. So then, how is cancer made if it stops it from growing? If it, the checkpoint gets missed, so say. But if the checkpoint's missed and they figure that it's missed. Well, you don't. You don't figure out it's missed. But I thought you just said that once they figure out it's like you miss it, then they stop it. But sometimes they don't. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. So, so we come up to a checkpoint, right? Yep. And it checks it and makes sure it's all good. But sometimes it misses stuff too, because we're dealing with atoms. Like the the only thing that is controlling the cell is just atoms in different combinations. So it's not like a person that can actively look. Like if I could, I could tell you if there's a misspelling in this, because I can reread it and make sure. But we're talking about atoms, and they just do their job, and there's no thinking involved. Oh, good question. It's a lot, very complex. But so. So talking about cancer, uh, I'll wrap this up, and then we'll, we got to get on this. Um, that misses a checkpoint, or oh, I take that back. They're at a checkpoint, and it gets stopped. Well, there's a couple things that the cell can do, um, two of which I remember. One is the cell can repair itself. So the cell can repair the damaged DNA or the damaged whatever it may be. Um, or two, the cell can go into auto lice, which means cell death, self-death. So the cell just bursts open and releases all its contents. Pretty much, yep, yep. So cells, cells, cells uh, explode actually. Yep, yep. Lice, lice is a tear and spills out. So cells do that all the time. It's it's so complex. There's so many layers to it. It's it, it's extremely fascinating. I, I, I don't, and the simple answer is I don't know. Like I, I cannot explain okay. the entirety of the cell because it's so complex. Like they're still finding, the other day I saw an article where they found like three new organelles for cells. I'm like, how do you just find new organelles? I don't know. Good question. All right, let's learn about the cell cycle. Okay, so what, what, so we know about mitosis, which means when the cell splits and creates a new cell, right? Yep. So I'm going to mark that with, I don't know, that. You, you, can, you can designate it any way you want, but I'm going to label this mitosis. Okay, so this segment of the cell cycle is mitosis. That's, that's that part of the cell's life, which means it's not always going to be going through mitosis. It's not going to constantly divide. There's going to be a stage where the cell um, is just kind of there, growing, you know, doing its normal function, making, um, I don't know, proteins, making enzymes for the rest of the body, just regular stuff. So we, the overall designation for that is called interphase. And so I am going to leave, uh, grab one of these, grab brown. Okay, we're going to go all the way around, come back here. Actually, it's going to go, okay. So this is called interphase. It's the phase in between mitosis. There is one, just, we'll come back to this. It's the stage in between mitosis, this, it's just the regular function. So we'll call that interphase. Okay, so let's go back to mitosis. We're going to talk about this gap here. Um, 
where did what was the last step of mitosis? What's that called? Prophase. Prophase. Inter. Oh, what's that? No. Nope. Pmat. Telophase. Telophase. Yep. I I didn't say this when I was explaining it to you, but the way I always remember it, I came up with this myself, so I don't know if it's the best. But I just say Pmat. So prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Pmat is the order of order of uh, mitosis. PMAT. Yep. So what what was the last what's what happens in telophase? It's like almost going into the Sure. It's oh, it's almost to the nuclear envelope starting to recover. The the chromosomes are on the edge, but there's one thing that's still not done and that the cell is this the, yeah, the cell is still together, right? Remember when I drew it, it kind of looked like this where this was still connected. Well, Cytokinesis is the separation of those cells. And cyto, the cell, kinesis is movement. Uh, that, that doesn't really help you in this instance, but cytokinesis. So cytokinesis is the, the phase where the um, plasma membrane of the cell splits into two. So we're going to label that. Cytokinesis. All right. So, like there's different stages in mitosis, there is different stages in interphase. And those, those different stages have to do with preparation of mitosis, for one. Um, and that's really what we're concerned about when we're talking about the cell cycle, just the, um, the various stages of preparation for mitosis. So the first one... Um, is called, I'm trying to keep it, there we go, do this. purple. The first stage, I'm going to line up right here. We're going to come around. No, you are all right. All right, so let's pull it back into here. It's called G1, so we, which means growth one. So that's the first first segment of interphase, right? And then we have a a phase in there. I'm gonna use all the colors called S. And so, uh, I don't know if we talked about this, but do you... What's that? Correct. This, these are the phases of interphase. So this is called S or syn. This. So this phase is called S or synthesis. Guess what it's doing? Synthesizing. What? Itself. What? Itself. What's it? Mm, not quite. Synthesizes to create. It's making a new cell. Uh, it's kind of. It's, it's finishing the cell. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll spoil it. It's, it's making DNA. It's oh, doubling the amount. Awesome. You know how in, in mitosis, DNA splits, right? In one side. Well, it needs to double it in order to, for one, uh, to bolt, for both cells to have um, the appropriate amount of DNA. So synthesis is where they're making the DNA that's eventually going to be divided up into the, between the two cells. What color do I use for that? Okay, so you know how they have like the one cell? Yeah. And then it splits? Sure. Is it two smaller cells? Or does it yep. get small and then it gets Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets small and gets big. So, okay, we're going to go into math here. So, when I say area, what do you, what do you, how do, you, how do I find the area of a square? Length, Length times width. And what's area? So it's going to be like meters. What? Square. Squared, right? What about a volume? It's going to be meters. What? Cubed. Cubed, right? So, the bigger the cell gets, 
the membrane is going to be squared. So you're going to have a square area of a membrane. But the insides are going to be cubed, which means, so it's exponential. So if you look at a graph, I'm going to do this for you. If you look at a graph and this is squared and it looks like this, well, this is supposed to be going up faster. Cubed is going to be so much faster. It's going to grow on the inside way faster than the outside can hold it. So it needs a split. I know, I know. It, it, it has to do with why it splits. Why do cells split? It's because the volume becomes so much more than what the surface can hold. Because it, it's exponent. This grows exponentially faster than this. So what are the insides? Like, once it just keep on growing, like, okay, so like it grows, right? Yep. And then it splits. So then it wants it to still be really big on the other, like. No, it's gonna divide in two. So then it would keep on growing. And then the other. Yes, and they keep on growing, and then they split again. Well, like, wouldn't there be a lot of stuff in there? Yes, there is. Well, well, we'll keep going, and then at the end of class, I can answer every question. Let's finish this up. So if we're going to have G1, G2, okay, yeah, absolutely. We'll have G2, and that's just more, that's just more growth. So that's just the cell growing? Yep, it's just more cell growth. Synthesis is just splitting off? Yep. Sure. It it's getting the the mitochondria for one are reproducing. You have more than one mitochondria per cell. It's usually represented with just one, but and then you're getting more. Uh, maybe the vacuole. Everybody know what vac? Remember what the vacuole is? The storage. The storage yeah, is getting to too much. Um, so on and so forth. Like it stuffs coming in and it's not going out as fast and it just keeps growing. More ribosomes. Golgi apparatus, I don't know, pick an organ out, doesn't matter. It's going to keep growing. So this is the cell cycle. We're going to run through it again. It doesn't matter where you start because it's a circle, but let's start at mitosis. So a big cell divides, and then it splits. So the, the DNA divides, mitosis. The cells split into two new cells, cytokinesis. So instead of having one big cell, now you have two small cells. The cells grow, 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 and then they decide that it's time to make more DNA. So they, they stop for a little bit, they slow down, they make this DNA, and then they grow a little more until they decide that they're too big, they're about to burst, and they need to split again, so, and so on and so forth. Like, is it like mitosis or not? Uh, no, no. It just DNA doubles. <laughs> In synthesis, DNA doubles. Did that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how fast does this happen? Like, how many cells do I get in like a, lot. a second? Also lose. So that's a Google problem. I can look that up for you. Wait, how do you lose? Do they just they die? die. Yeah. Because they have a problem with it? Or they just What's die? it? They just get old and die. And do cells. Cells on your skin right now. Cells divide approximately every 24 hours. So every cell in your body, well, not every cell. Nerve okay. cells don't do this as much. Uh, fat cells don't do this as much. But on average, cells divide once every 24 hours. So it's not that how many it's die? Not as fast as um, <coughs> About the same. So think of your skin cells. You're always rubbing it on stuff, killing cells. They're going to divide much faster. All constantly, yes, yeah, probably. Yeah. You, so, go ahead. What I was going to do, okay, that chart that you're showing at volume of the surface area, think of it this way. If this was, as you can see, a large circle, it, it should be able to catch that, okay? But what happens if you take all these small circles, open them up, and take all that distance and add them all together? What is going to be greater, the volume inside of this or all of these circles unwrapped and added together? All those circles. All of these circles are going to be much, much greater. Yes? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> well, you can answer it too, I guess. <laughs> he, he's probably better at it than I am. Uh, so can you, like, kill a lot of cells but, like, not regrow as many? Like, 
If I just keep on clapping my hands and I kill a whole bunch of cells. It, you'll be I'm fine. Die from clapping your hands. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yep. So you'd be like tired. <laughs> yeah, you'd you'd be tired. It's you won't you won't clap enough to kill all your cells. Well, not all of them, but like a lot of them. Like, what if you like lose a lot of cells in a day? I wouldn't worry about so, like, it. What are bruises? Bruises? Yeah. A bruise is when your blood vessel bursts and leaks into your skin, Stop. That's and the blood is trapped within Why your. Why so much? Um, inflammation. So your body. Well, not inflammation. Uh, what's the bad? <laughs> All right, we, we get on. Do we want to move on to uh, genetics, Mr. McKenney? Uh, just go, okay. I guess. A, any other? Just the phases of mitosis that you've seen. In oh, there. yeah. Okay, uh, go ahead and put them in that order. That, uh, you start with your prophase, your uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So I understand that's in your book, but when you see it this way, it That work? Does that make sense to everybody? Or do I need, yeah. need to? Okay. <laughs> I, I ruined your order here. One of the things, if you don't mind me. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So what you might think of, we can just draw this as the center of the circle here. Okay. That way, when you see oh, yeah. this, you have your, your G1. Okay. And then looks to me like you have... See here. Synthesis this right is the here. S phase. Yep. That's not quite as long. And then what is happening in this S phase? It has something to do with this. Yeah, it's replicating itself. Then as we see here, it's just another period of growth that you talked about earlier. Then I think it's easier to see the different parts of this as you go and what their, their duration actually is. Okay. And then, uh, uh, very quickly, like you said, how when you have cancer cells here, there, and why is there an issue with that? Uh, we can answer that maybe with a microbiology application. Is if there are if there's a what do I want to say? If people don't like cats, okay, this actually happened on an island, okay. If you don't like cats, let's get rid of all the cats on the island because yes. we don't like them. China. That is a bad China. problem to have. I think it's dogs. What, in your estimation, was the next problem that happened on that island? Mice. Mice. What do rats, or what do cats feed upon? Mice. Rats. rats. So if there are no natural predators like cats, and now your rat population is going up, you might have thought you fixed one problem, now you just created two more. And that's what the problem is dealing with cancer. You try to fix one problem, now you just created two more. It's not as simple as just saying, let's get this process to stop. So it like just doesn't chemo, happen that way. That attacks the cancer cells, right? To take and it away? healthy cells along with yeah, it, too. Yeah, so I was just going to ask, how do they know which one goes together? I have a, I, I didn't actually know this. Go I think ahead. I got <clears throat> So when, when, you, your, when your cells become cancerous, um, they suck up significantly more nutrients than the cells around them. So like a normal operating cell would not suck up as much nutrients as a cancer cell would. That's why you could have a tumor this big and you'd look super skinny, right? Because like this amount of skin's not making me look that skinny, but a cancer cell about that big might. Um, so they suck up so much stuff. They take all the, your, your energy away. So the way chemo works is you think like you want when you take chemo or when you have chemo, um, you're trying to kill all of the cancer cells and keep you alive. Um, and the reason it works is because if it was if the cells were sucking them up about the same amount, so cancer cells and normal cells, um, then that chemo would kill all of you at the same rate as it would kill the cancer. But because it sucks it up so much more, the cancer I, I don't know the exact mechanism, but takes that chemo sucks it up, it kills the cancer cell, and then sure, you do have some normal cell death, but cancer, it's gonna it take way up, more. It takes it away. Yeah, protein or whatever it may be. Like, um, I remember 
It's because it's killing cell. Yeah, it's it's sure, cancer. it's killing your cancer. Um, no, that's radiation. That's a little different. A little different. But um, uh, what's in chemotherapy? It's it's a cocktail. It's a cocktail of cell killing drugs. Yeah, it's just a cocktail of cell killers. It, yeah, it's really not. It's terrible for you, but it's better than cancer. Yeah, absolutely. That's why you're exhausted because it's just training. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I and it might. I don't know why it causes uh, hair hair death. Um, it's probably because. No, it's all right. I I'm glad you're curious about it. This is what we're here for. It shoots uh, DNA damaging rays into the cells, like kind of like the sun, but more precise. So if you have if you have a blob of cancer there, we're gonna take a machine um, one way and just kill that area. Is how I interpret it as. It damages the cells. So if you get radiation, is there just like a hole in your own? No, no, it kills the DNA, the DNA specifically. So if no, I it might. I read maybe. I don't know, but. Do we do we want to move into genetics, Mr. McKenney? Uh, See what I can do. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Go ahead and get your handouts, please. All right. Turn around. Poor favorite word. Ooh, sorry. Yeah, I did. Anyway, okay, so now that we're done with the cell cycle, um, we're going to start talking about genetics. And so all this DNA that we're talking about, it's the coolest thing in science. That's not true, but I like it a lot. Um, we're taking all that DNA stuff we learned and we're putting it into um, something that's more relevant maybe to you. So this is how DNA affects you. So does sure. it affect yeah. us anyways? Good transition. No, it does. So then why did you say, why does DNA don't, don't read into it. Genetics is fun. So um, kind of considered the father, air quotes, father of Gregor Mendel, or father of genetics is Gregor Mendel. And he was a monk, and he was in charge of the gardens. Um, he entered the University of Vienna in 1851 to study science and mathematic, mathematics, including statistics. What are the monks like? I don't know. Do they look like normal people, or do they look like? I mean, I guess they are normal people, but like. Actually, I think there's a picture. There's a picture in your book of him. Really? Yep. Are they cute? Now you're a walking red flag. All right. So he he discovered the um, the not theory but the rule of hereditary. So that genes are passed on from the parents to the offspring. The transmissions of characteristics um, come from the parents to the offspring. Heredity, heredity. Oh, shoot. So before he like figured this out, did people just like, he's just like not holding my kid? What's that? They didn't know how it, how it was. Probably a lot of uh, religious sort of things and mysticism, like thinking that's how it worked. Did he get kicked out? Because like, monks are religious, right? So then he's like, goes up and he's like, you guys are stupid. Like, no, he didn't get kicked out for that. Nope. 
I, I don't think so. I think it was pretty accepted. Maybe he did it respectfully. We'll, we'll talk about how he showed that this is how it works um, in a second here. So, I'm guessing, you, or I shouldn't say I'm guessing, but you might have heard of Mendel's peas, Mendel's Gardens peas. And he was able to observed was able to observe some characteristics that were observable. Yeah. Um, don't worry about it. So, I will give it. I'll give an ex, an explanation for that. So. Up here, guys. So he had two parents that had yellow peas. Yellow, wrinkly peas. That, that was what they were. But when he bred the two pea plants together, sometimes there was green, wrinkly peas. Sometimes there was green, smooth peas. Sometimes there was yellow, smooth peas. And sometimes there were still yellow, wrinkly peas. And so he, the important thing, statistics, he was... I remember learning about this. Good. He, he wondered why... Why that might take place. <laughs> Are we good here? No. 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 Okay. 20 more seconds. Because I like 20. I'll make it 21. That's my age. I think you said 21 seconds. Oh, you're 21? Correct. Dallin. No. Yeah, I'm going to tell Samantha about that. No, we're not going to buy you beer. <laughs> we didn't even ask. No, I asked. Like, All right, moving on. Mendel's Garden Peas. Um, so he, I still can't think, think of the right word. He uh, died, trait. What, what, he discovered that there was traits, and he coined the term trait, I guess, that, that, Characteristics, specific characteristics such as the color of the pea, um, influence in the parents um, can influence the color of the pea plants in their offspring. And so, what he found was that height, pod color, texture, and the flowers that they had um, were all easily easily um, observable on the differences. And then the way he did it is he took two yellow wrinkly pea plants and he crossed them and he found that, like I was saying, that some were green and some were smooth. And so some were green and smooth, some were green and wrinkly, some were yellow and smooth, some were yellow and wrinkly. There was all variations of it, but it wasn't in the same amounts. There, were, there was differing amounts to them. Well, he was a gardener. He had a garden, um, and then the the idea the idea of traits was then I don't know I I don't think that he was the guy who did it, but uh, maybe some other scientists found his research and they're like, huh, this is interesting. Let me try this with mice. So uh, see if you breed two black mice, if you can have a white mouse or something. Sure. Like that one guy who injected the. Yep. Um, yep. Same kind of stuff. The, the, Wasn't he also alone? Yes, I think. I can't remember. What is that hook? Too smart. A monk also developed cells. The the theory of cells. Um, it's because it was. No, it was. It's because they're they're through the Catholic Church and they had a lot of money and so. I think I think a modern day monk and I think a modern day monk and a monk in the past are two different two different things two different ideas. <laughs> we got to move on. So okay, we'll oh, run through pollination. Takes place when pollen grains produced in the male portion called anthers are transferred to the male female stigma. 
So that's pollination. Moving on. <coughs> Mendel's methods. So pollinations is, is when you take those pollen grains and transfer them to a female. Um, but stealth pollination is when you take two offspring um, from the same, same family, I guess, and cross them. Oh, shoot, no. Self-pollination is when you take um, the, the pollen from its, itself and put it onto the female portions of the plant. Yeah. Yep. That's all right. I, and I can do some drawing here. I'll... Uh, let's go right there. Perfect. Like, when I'm writing, I don't quite hear you. That's all right. So, I don't know. I'm going to draw male and then female. So, the pollen from the male of two different plants. So, we're going to call these plants and then make this dirt. These, these are two different plants, right? And so, pollination is when you take the pollen from this plant and you place it onto the female. And then it creates offspring in the female How plant. Like, Self-pollination is when you have a plant <laughs> and it has a male part and a female part and you take the pollen mm -hmm. from the male and you place it on the female part of the same plant. So then like, okay, after that happens, it creates, what do you mean by it creates an offspring? Offspring is a child. Uh, uh, No, okay, so, okay, you've seen a flower, you see, you've seen a flower before, right? No, that's never. So when you take the, you see that the yellow fuzzy bits on a flower, yeah. and you, you, you can scoop that up and take it to the same species of flower and put that on the female portion. Um, this, this gets into botany, but um, you put that in there, and eventually it'll have a, a fruit or like a, a soybean, uh, uh, corn, apples, whatever you want to talk, any seeds come from pollination. Yes, yes and no. But does that make sense? Probably not. I'm probably confusing you. But that's, that's what fruit are. They're when pollination occurs and it produces a... Uh, I don't know. That's botany. That's too, too in-depth. Okay, so we have, we have self-pollination now and cross-pollination is when the... Two offspring from this plant, so this, there's two, I don't know how to illustrate this, but when the mom plant has two kids of her own, two baby plants of her own, they grow up. And then they do the same thing. And then, so we have a male and a female, right? So the mom had two offspring, and then you take the pollen from one of the offspring and place it onto the other of the same. Yes. That's why it was done on plants, not people or animals and stuff I mean, like that. Okay. How much time we got? Five minutes. Good. All right. We will call it there. Yes. No. I mean, like, no. It, it doesn't affect plants like it affects humans. Yeah. It can. Um, but that, it doesn't, 